Uh, this is something we call apparent wind. Uh, now we're actually gonna get pretty technical because this is affecting Sorry. us all <laughs> once we start to move around. Anybody like math? Yeah, we yeah. love it. Nice. Of course. Awesome. Everybody loves math. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> what I want to talk about is how the fact that you're moving changes your wind window and changes how the wind is affecting you. So imagine now for a second, you're in the ocean, there's no wind at all, you are on a jet ski going 30 kilometers per hour, right? How much wind are you going to feel in your face and in what direction? Uh, yeah. 30 km yeah. in the opposite direction. It's in your face coming yeah. this way. We're going to call this the generated wind. You feel it because you're moving through space. Now imagine, instead of being on a jet ski and no wind, you're going in that direction at 30 km per hour, but you're going that direction on your kite. Uh, say the wind is 40 km per hour, and it's coming from the true wind, the actual wind is coming from this direction at 40 kilometers per hour, but you're also feeling 30 kilometers of wind on your face because you're moving that direction. How much wind are you actually gonna feel now and from what direction? Hmm. <sighs> Remember? What direction is that direction? What? <laughs> oh, uh, you said you like math. No, no, First no. one is out. <laughs> How much wind are you? have got two different winds working together on you. What kind of wind are you gonna feel here? This guy's going. I, knew this. I studied this in high school. Yeah. You went to high school. Boom. Charlotte, you're smart. You're gonna feel 50 kilometers of wind. How did she know that number? You're a math person. Used to be. Nice. So the, the thing is, the combination of those two winds is now 50 kilometers per hour, but it's coming from this direction now. From a little bit forward so now your wind window is not like this now your wind window is like this right <laughs> that's the apparent wind and i'm just gonna get a little bit more complicated now you're not riding in 40 kilometers per hour wind anymore now you're riding 50 kilometers per hour wind coming from here which means you're probably going faster too now right Ah, yeah, yeah, now no, you're, now no you're going 35 kilometers per hour. And because you're moving faster, you get more wind, not only on your face, but in your kite, which makes you go faster, which makes you get more wind, which makes you go faster, which makes you get more wind. And theoretically, mathematically, you could just build up that speed to an infinite speed. And the only limiting factor is the friction and the drag and the fact that you're pushing water on the way with the board. That's why these people on ice skates with very little wind can just start going faster and faster, two, three, four times as fast as the wind. And that's why a lot of people all win sports. This apparent wind thing is common to all win sports, and a lot of people just call it magic. The fa they call it magic because the faster you're going, the stronger the wind gets. This affects you a lot when you're at the water start level. It uh, affects you in two ways. It can help you and it can hurt you. So, what are we doing when we're starting our water start? Power stroke. Why are we doing a power stroke? Because we need some power to get us going. Yeah. Once we need, we're going, yeah. we don't need that power anymore. We need that speed. Yeah, because it takes more power to pick you up out of the water than to keep you going. So we need to get our speed up and build up our speed until we get more power in the kite, more power in the kite. And that's what it takes to get us moving. So the faster we're moving, the more power is coming into the kite. And a lot of you have felt this probably. When you start riding, there's a point where you start going, whoa, shit, I'm going faster and faster. Oh, oh yeah. You felt that. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, and you either crash with a huge spray or maybe you bring it all into the pool. <laughs> That's the apparent wind. And you need to generate that to get that initial speed so you can set your edge and start to ride. So, to get going, you need that apparent wind. You need to pick up your speed. But if you notice the faster you're going, the wind is coming from further ahead too. So the, which makes it harder to go upwind. Yeah. Right? And the more your window is smaller? Or uh, not well, the so window is big, it's just in a different direction. Okay. So that's when you really need to 
start to slow down a little bit to bring that apparent wind back in this direction to edge against it so that when we start out again here's the wind coming from here when we start out same thing with getting planing on the wind surf we always go downwind pick up speed and then we can start to go up if we try that classic mistake of <laughs> power stroking the kite and edging too much with the board we don't pick enough speed, we just slough, 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 and we're getting frustrated because we're not going anywhere. Right? Sound familiar? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's why we keep that kite moving until we pick up some speed, and once you have that speed and the water pushing past you, then we kind of slow down, and then we can start to go up. I had a student once, years ago, back in the day, we have, we have radio helmets, we don't use them often, but um, we do if we need them. He came to me and he could already ride. He said, I can go back and forth and there's no problem with the control. He says, I just can't go upwind. And uh, I said, okay, let's you know, get out there. And he went out and he was just like, boom, boom, all the way back, top speed. <laughs> Couldn't go upwind at all, so I gave him the radio helmet. And I got him going at it. He said, slow down, slow down. Every 10 seconds late, every 10 seconds, I just said, slow down, and he started to slow down, and within 10 minutes, that diesel was working way up. And that's really the key to going upwind, is get that speed and slow down until you're going just fast enough that you're not plopping in the water again, and that's how you're gonna go up. And because for all of you guys who are riding, it's great to get up and go, yeah, now I'm riding, it's great, but we're still doing that fucking walk of shame, walk of fast. <laughs> right? Which sucks, but your next goal, it's great to get riding, but your next goal is actually to, just like you did when your body dragged, work your way upwind back here. And you see all of us when we're riding, we go out, we work our way upwind. Once we're upwind, we do our jumps, we do our cars, uh, and, and all that, and that's going to kind of take us back downwind, and we work back upwind. Have you ever noticed when people come in to catch the kite, when people come in and you're trying to catch the kite and someone's standing here because they want to catch the kite and to stop they edge really hard and at that last minute the kite goes Whoop, and it shoots forward you've seen it that's the apparent wind right there. so if you're if someone's coming in and you want to catch their kite and they haven't stopped already stand a little bit further up because again when they're going fast this way their wind window is now shifted here and they're riding like this um, and that can help you when you're trying to ride up wind. We went through this before, yeah? When you were starting to ride up wind better, the way to ride up wind, edge harder, slow down, let that kite move forward, let your wind window come around to here, and kind of find the balance between edging and finding your power in the kite. You were doing really well today on your riding. I saw we were all watching. <laughs> Ooh, like, man, good body position. And you're feeling with your bar. And you're a getting bit fast. Like that? And it was a little bit fast. <laughs> How do we slow down? And an edge. An edge. And what do we mean by edging? Is push with that back here. Okay. Exactly. So exactly. So if you can do exactly what you're doing, edge a little bit harder. My student today was doing the same thing. I was telling you, lean back, lean back, edge hard, let the bar out smoothly, bit by bit. You're really gonna start going. In fact, we watched you at one point when you're starting to do that. We watched your 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 wake boom just start to turn up with more. And then if you feel yourself bogging down and slowing down, go ahead and do a power stroke. Take the edge off your board a little bit, put your speed up again, catch the power, and then bit by bit edge more and find that. So if you stop by keeping the kite at 10 o'clock instead of setting it at the top, you'll feel yourself going up when you just before you stop. And that's the feeling you want to find when you're actually holding on to it and keep, keeping on riding it along. Sorry about the math, but um, the point is the faster you're going, the stronger the wind and the more forward it's coming from. So use it to get going and then slow back down.